First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. First Chronicles 12, verse 32. And from the New King James Version of the Bible, we find these words recorded. Of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. Their chiefs were 200, and all their brethren were at their command. The sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. It is from that verse of scripture and that portion of the, the scripture that I'm, I'm going to preach and teach tonight from the subject, knowing what to do in every situation. Knowing what to do in every situation. Amen. Father, your will be done your way, nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. In Jesus' name, amen. Several weeks ago, while in prayer, or rather while in a prayerful spirit about what 2024 would entail, I got a sudden settling in my spirit. That in order to successfully maneuver in the coming year, it is imperative that we as believers follow the leading of the Holy Spirit in every aspect of our lives. I use the word maneuver because I have been sensing that turbulent times are ahead. And so that no one gets nervous or even fearful about what I just said, I'm going to say it again, but I'm going to say it in the reverse order. I've been sensing that turbulent times are ahead, but we as believers will successfully maneuver if we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit in every aspect of our lives. And I'm confident that what I'm saying is true for two reasons. Number one, I am certain that what I am sensing is prompted by the Holy Spirit. I know that of a certainty. And number two, Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 16, verse 13, however, when he... The spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. In the verses prior to the verses of our text, we have a list of those who were committed to serving David even before he officially became king of Judah and ultimately over all of Israel. I say officially because God had anointed David aforetime or before time. Are we together? But David had enough sense to submit to the current leadership until the right time came for him to become king. And so he had, there were those committed to serving David even before he officially became king of Judah and ultimately over all Israel. For instance, in verses 1 and 2 of our text, being 1 Chronicles chapter 12, we, were, we are told that there were men who came to David at Ziklag while he was still a fugitive from Saul, the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men helpers in the war. 
Verse 2 tells us that they were armed with bows. Watch this, using both the right hand and the left hand in hurling stones and shooting arrows with the bow. They were of Benjamin, Saul's brethren. And that's what makes that interesting. Now, uh, there are two references in particular to left-handed warriors that will help us appreciate verse 2. Because verse 2 says again that they use both right hand and the left hand in hurling stones and shooting arrows with the bow. Uh, the first reference is Judges chapter 3 and verse 15. And in Judges chapter 3, verse 15, the Bible says, But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gerah, a Benjamite, a man left-handed. And by him the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. Moab, that's the first reference. The second reference can be found in, in Judges chapter 20 and verse 16. The Bible said, among all this people, there were 700 chosen men left-handed. Everyone could sling stones at an hair breath and not miss. Breath means width. They could hit something as wide or rather as narrow as a strand of hair. They could sling a stone and not miss. Can I tell somebody that their slingshots were not like our childhood slingshots? But they actually had uh, something, you know, just to visualize it, like this tower, for instance, and it had stones in it, and you had to hurl it, and you had to have precision. There must needs be accuracy in your delivery. And when they released it at the right time, it should hit. But he says that they were, they were chosen men and felt the need to let us know that they were left-handed. Everyone, I want to read it just because I want to. Everyone could sling stones at an hair breath and not miss. And so the point is simply this. If left-handed warriors can sling stones at an hair breath and not miss, how much more can those who can hurl stone with both, of their, both their right hand and left hand be of benefit to David's cause? Are we together? In verse 8 of our text, being 1 Chronicles chapter 12, we are told that some Gadites joined David at the stronghold in the wilderness. They were mighty men of valor, men trained for battle, who could handle shield and spear, whose faces were like the faces of lions and were as swift as gazelles on the mountains. Now, let's look at that list right quick. To say that they were mighty men of valor is to say that they were men of courage who had a warrior spirit. See, you either going to be a warrior or a warrior. And I choose to be a warrior in the spirit. To say that they were men trained for battle is to say that they were men who patiently received, watch this, the necessary training to become mighty men of valor. To say that they could handle shield and spear is to say that they were men who were skilled in the use of their weapons, both offensive and defensive, and that those skills resulted from their training. To say that their faces were like the faces of lions is to say that they could be both calm and courageous. Are we together? That's why every now and then you need to let some folk know, don't let this suit fool you. Don't, don't let this dress fool you. Don't let this church hat fool you. I can be calm, but I can also be courageous. Finally, to say that they were as swift as gazelles on the mountains is to say that they were mobile. 
And they were prepared, watch this, to fight at a moment's notice wherever they were needed. Good God Almighty, if you need me to fight over here, I can fight over here. If you need me to skip over here, I can skip over here. Wherever you need me, I'm mobile, I'm mobile, I'm mobile. I'm mobile because I am swift as a gazelle. By the way, this was no small army, y'all. There's no small army. Proof of that is in verse 22. And I've read this before, but I had noticed it until preparing this message. For at that time, they came to David day by day to help him. Read the last part with me. Until it was a great army like the army of God. Say what? The army of God. The God, the, the host of heaven, wasn't a small army. Then beginning at verse 23, we see the numbers for the divisions that were equipped for war. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. And came, you know, uh, that came to David at Hebron to turn over the kingdom to, uh, of Saul to him. Watch this. According to the word of the Lord. <laughs> All right. As we look at these, I want you to notice their skills and abilities. Verse 24, and we're going to keep rolling. And the sons of Judah bearing shield and spear, 6,800 armed for war. 25, the sons of Simeon, mighty men of valor, fit for war. 7,100. And of the sons of Levi, 4,600. 27 says, Jehoiada, the leader of the Aaronites, and with him, 3,700. Verse 28 says, Zadok, a young man, a valiant warrior. And from his father's house, 22 captains. 29 tells us of the sons of Benjamin, relatives of Saul now, relatives of Saul. God, I'm telling you, God will raise up relatives of your enemy to help fight for you. Did you hear what I just said? So when, 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 when one of Saul's cousins come to you, don't think it's strange all the time. You know, we get, we get a little paranoid and get a little suspicious. What you want? Are you spying? Sometimes God had turned the tide. And giving you favor. Because just cause Saul evil don't mean his relative got to be evil. Just cause Saul evil. Okay. Uh, what verse are we on? Still on 29. Of the sons of Benjamin, relatives of Saul, 3,000. Uh, unto them the greatest part of them had remained loyal to the house of Saul. <laughs> 30, verse 30 says, and of the sons of Ephraim, 20,800. Here it is, mighty men of valor, famous men throughout their father's house. 31 says, of the half tribe of Manasseh, 18,000. Here it is, who were designated by name to come make David king. They were duly appointed and <laughs> to bring this assignment to pass. Are we together? We're skipping verse 32 on purpose, and we're going to verse 33. Of Zebulun, there were 50,000 who went out to battle. Here it is. Expert in war with all weapons of war. Expert in war with all weapons. Just, just give me one. I know what to do with it. Stout-hearted men who could keep ranks. 34 says, Naphtali, 1,000 captains, and with them, 37,000 with shield and spear. Verse 35, of the Danites, meaning of the tribe of Dan, who could keep battle formation, 28,600. Verse 36, of Asher, here it is, those who could go out to war, able to keep battle formation, 40,000. 37 reads, and the Reubenites and the Gadites and of the half-tribe of Manasseh from the other side of the Jordan, 120,000, here it is, armed for battle with every kind of weapon of war. 38 says, all these men of war 
who could keep ranks came to Hebron with a loyal heart to make David king over all Israel. And all the rest of Israel were of one mind to make David king. Finally, 39 reads, and they were there with David three days, eating and drinking for their brethren had prepared for them. Now, without taking anything away from any of the other tribes mentioned, the children of Issachar had something special. Scripture tells us in verse 32, if we can go back to verse 32 uh, uh, of our text, that the sons of Issachar had understanding of the times whew, to know what Israel ought to do. Is that right? So they, they had something special. Uh, they had the ability to discern the times and seasons. Okay, well, Pastor, why are you picking them out? Because there were mighty men of valor who were skilled and trained in all weapons of war. Yeah, but if you don't know how, if you don't know when to use it, are we together? It can be deadly. They have the ability to discern the times and seasons. And while it is true that God is the one that changes the times and seasons, and we get that from Daniel 2, verse 21, that God changes the times and the seasons, the A clause of that. We need the ability to discern those season changes. I'm going to say it again just because I want to. Although God is the one that changes the times and the seasons, according to Daniel 2 and 21, we as believers need the ability to discern those season changes. And the only way to do that is by remaining prayerful and by following, everybody say following, following, following the leading of the Holy Spirit. I emphasize following because a lot of people love to boast about what God revealed to them or what God told them. But, but the question is, are you acting on what God revealed to you by doing what God told you to do? I'm not impressed by how much you say you hear from God. What's important to me is whether or not you are obedient Lord, have mercy to what you said God revealed for you or revealed to you or told you to do. Again, the text says they had an understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. They had an understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Now, I'm going to do this in the reverse order. The, the word knowledge refers to information, facts, or awareness that's gained through experience or education. Are we together? The word knowledge refers to information, facts, or awareness that's gained through experience or education. Amen. If I don't have the same education you have, I might have an experiential knowledge. Uh, come on up in here. I might have a been there, done that, got the t-shirt knowledge. Amen. I might have a, if you keep down that road, this is going to happen, knowledge. And, and by the way, that's not speaking anything on anybody. It's just understanding how this thing works. The word understanding refers to the ability of someone to comprehend something. Simply stated. The ability of somebody to comprehend something. With that said, the children of Issachar, and I need for you to catch this, the children of Issachar, according to the text, had an inside knowledge and understanding. I need for you to catch that. They didn't just have a knowledge. They had an inside knowledge and understanding of what God was doing. In other words, when things happen, they were not taken by surprise. See, whenever you have an inside knowledge and understanding of what God is doing, you're not moved as quickly as others are moved. Oh, I feel led to say this. And that's, therefore, some people think that you're just nonchalant. 
Some people think you just don't care. It's not that you just don't care. It's just you got an inside knowledge. You have an inside understanding of what God is doing. And if that be the case, you are safe and secure from all alarms. Now I say all alarms, but there is something that can concern you. God bless you, Pastor Branch. Amen. Now listen. Uh, they, 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 when things happened, they were not taken by surprise. They knew what Israel should do and when it should be done. And saints, that's the same ability that we're going to need in this coming year. Are you listening to me? Okay, well, Pastor, all right, you said all that, and you said we're going to need that, but how can I get it? I have a simple answer. Pray for it. If Solomon could pray for wisdom, and if James says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who, who, you know, who giveth liberally and upbraideth not, then we can ask for the ability to discern. Amen, somebody. So pray for it. Watch this. And after you pray for it, pay attention to how you feel. What you talking about? Uh, for instance, when you feel like something new is about to happen. I'm going to stop there temporarily. Have you ever just sensed in your spirit something new is about to happen? You, you, you may have sensed it in, in, in your church and pastors especially should be able to pick that up. There are times when we'll come and we'll say, I know we've been doing this like this for a minute, but we're going to do something different. And that ain't up for a vote either. Oh, come on up in here. Because you ain't talking about building a church. You're talking about things that pertain to the Spirit of God. And if God tells us, change the order of the service, no apostle, no bishop, no prophet, no evangelist, no other pastor or teacher, can challenge you on what you know God said for your house. Oh, praise his name. And when you feel like something new is about to happen, listen, when you feel reluctant to make a certain decision because you feel like it's not quite time. I said when you feel reluctant to make a certain decision because you feel like it's not quite time. There have been those who know what to do, but, but knew that the time was not now. Can I tell somebody you can do the right thing at the wrong time? When you feel like you shouldn't take on anything new right now, whew, because you feel like a new door is about to open. I'm going to say it again. When you feel like you shouldn't take on anything new right now because you feel like a new door is about to open. And so you got a lot of people that tell you what you ought to be doing. And some of the people that are telling you what you ought to be doing ain't doing nothing. My thing, you ain't God. And at the end of the day, you can't tell me what to do. My assignment comes from God. And sometimes they want to overload you so they can be gratified or whatever for whatever the reason is. But I'm telling you, there comes a time in your life when you feel like you shouldn't take anything new right now because you feel like a, a new door is about to open. And finally, when God leads you to stand for something that is supported by the word but may not necessarily be popular. See, there's some stuff. It's not popular to stand on certain things in this hour. But if it's supported by the word, oh, I'm going to stand. Oh, come on up in here, somebody. All these are indications that God has given you the ability to know what to do. And we need the ability to know what to do in every situation. 
I'm going to say it again because I know it's right. We are, there are turbulent times that are coming. But see, but God has a way of offsetting by saying that if my people follow me, Good God Almighty. I am their shepherd, said the Lord, and I lead you in paths of righteousness. And when that happens, other folk can panic about certain situations. Are you listening to me? But then you got some folk that won't panic because they've already spent some quality time with the Lord. They have an inside knowledge. They have an inside understanding about what God is doing. Can I tell y'all that doing pastor's anniversary, whomever came up with the idea of pounding us, how many that, that didn't, do you not know that they played right along into God's plan? Because I'm telling you, we're going to have to stock some stuff up. So I just want to take another opportunity to say thank you. I said we were good for a year. That might be stretching it, but I know for a good six months. But we got a jump start. Are you listening to me? But here is the thing. He leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God has already given somebody an inkling. Amen. And, 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 and there are those who will come and prophesy. Because listen, we know in part and we prophesy in part. I'm just preaching what I know. Somebody else will preach what they know. And when we put all those pieces together, oh, we get a picture. So don't discount one preacher just because he didn't say the same thing somebody else said. That's another thing. Stop allowing people to make you think that you ain't heard from God when you really heard from him. It ain't nothing but a, a python type spirit. And I know a python suffocates, but I'm using it in this point. It's like a snake. Because that's the same trick that the devil played on Eve. Did God really say? You ought to stand up and say yes. And that's another thing. I was sharing with somebody the other day in the family. Amen. Saints, you got to minister to your families. And what it is, God had used this individual prophetically. And it was to a point where they had not done that like that before. And I said to the individual, I said, now, what's going to happen is simply this. There are going to be times when you're going to speak the oracles of God. I said, God will give you a word of knowledge, meaning it is some knowledge that you did not learn from any human being, but God gave it to you. I said, and God will reveal it. I said, but he also give you the spirit of wi or the, the gift of wisdom or the spirit of wisdom, and you'll tell them how to. They said, yeah, that actually happened. I said, now, I need for you to be Beware of this, and I said that to that individual, and I'm gonna say it to all prophets or anybody that God occasionally used in the prophetic. There will be times when you prophesy and you know it's God, but when you come down from the mountain after you eat your Sunday dinner or your Wednesday snack, or whatever day it is, you're going, your mind is going to be like, what in the world have you done? And I said to them, but this is what God taught me. God asked me a question, I'll never forget it. One time I spoke into a person's life, I knew it was God. And when I came down from the mountain, I saw the person again, I said, can I ask you a question? We well, years ago, an early part of, of, of prophetic ministry, I said to them, was it on point? They said, it was very much on point and God said to me and I'm, I'm careful what I say he says that what, he asked me a question was it me then and I went back to when it happened I said yeah Lord he said well it's me now your feelings do not discount the anointing of God if it was God when you said it it's God now and if God said it, he'll bring that thing to pass. See, you know, the devil is a bully. He's been trying to bully the saints, making you think that they're out. Now, some people are off. Let's go there. Some people just off. You just want to say, okay, now I know we're human and we're subject to error, but you, you off more than you own. So you might just need to go somewhere and sit down.
But when you know in your Noah, prophet is Samson. Hallelujah. Can't nobody take it away. Are you listening to me? And that's basically what I wanted to tell you tonight. That's how the Lord is releasing right now. That 2024 is going to be a year whereby we are going to have to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. In every aspect of our lives. Now, I'm not saying you got to go get to the point where you said, Lord, what should I eat today? But if y'all, if y'all like that, fine. I just normally base on what I got a taste for. So, I mean, but if y'all got it like that, you can be asking. Why you asking? I'm just eating. because uh, Now, he might say, don't eat that. <laughs> or don't eat that there. Are we together? But in every aspect... Don't be hasty to make a decision. Oh, I just saw this. Don't let anybody push you to make a decision before the time. So you got folk that will rush you and push you into acting independent of God. But you, listen, if it ain't settled in your spirit, you just need to wait. And after a while, God will release you. Are you listening to me and say, now is the time. Do it now. And how many know God is a God of timing? So that's the, that's the word of God for the people of God. Oh, praise his name. God wants us to know what to do in every situation. Amen. And we're going to pray to that effect. Bow your heads in prayer. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I deliver your word. I've delivered your word to your people. And Father, I know that, that not because it was me that delivered it, but your word is true. Your word is a treasure to us. I pray, God, that it will fall on good ground in the name of Jesus. And now for those who say, well, I don't have that like that. I pray for every believer in this place that you will give him or her a greater discernment even when everybody else is dancing to the beat of somebody else's drum so to speak I pray that your people will stand still and know that it is right or not right sharpen our discernment God give it to us tonight we know that there are people whom uh, their spiritual gifts you, you've given some uh, the, 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 to know uh, uh, the gift of knowledge. You've given some the gift of wisdom. But as your people, we know that we could have it simply because the Holy Spirit leads and guides us into all truth. Thank you, God, for giving us practical information that we can apply it Thank you for the practical application. And, and, and just like when, when, uh, when Solomon prayed for wisdom, you allowed a situation to come up. And the way he acted upon it seems strange to man, even when we read it. But we know that it was of you because of the outcome. God, I pray for unity in this church and in other churches as well. We pray for unity in families. We pray that you restore relationship in families. We pray that you'll save the unsaved and fill those that say they're saved. And I pray, God, that you'll raise up, Lord, have mercy, prayer cells. Create prayer cells in our homes. Lord, have mercy. And, and I pray that you'll help us to maintain a posture of prayer so that when we come together as your people, mm, although there are differences of administration, you declare this by the same spirit. All the gifts may differ. It's one body. Help us as the body of Christ to walk like the children of Israel. Give us, Lord, have mercy, understanding, so that we will know what we ought to do. 
And we ask it in the name of Jesus, not just for the church, but on our jobs, in our communities, in our neighborhoods. Do it, God, for your glory. And we give you honor. We give you praise. It is done by faith. Let the church say amen. Thank God and amen. Hallelujah. That clock.